All right. Watching the world burn. Watching the world burn. May 18th, 2023 special Ukraine edition. A lot of things going on in Ukraine in the last week. My assessment is a lot of people say it's going to go on another year. Some people say June, July. I just don't see this, uh, well, this bucket of lies that the busted media wants to tell you about what's going on lasting much longer. Let's get Colonel Douglas McGregor's assessment. And he points out that at the beginning of this war, there were at least in theory 37.5 million Ukrainians in Ukraine. He makes the point that today that's not the case. Uh, there were already 2 million Ukrainians working in either Great Britain or the European Union outside of the country. You now have 4 million Ukrainian citizens, albeit Russians, people who speak Russian, living under Russian occupation or administration right now, the provinces in the south. Then you have over 10 million Ukrainians that have fled the country. Mm -hmm. 10 million? 10 million. That's a third of the country, or a quarter of the country. Yeah, you've got a million that have gone into Russia and the rest that have headed west. Now, to this must be added the losses. And, and again, no one is telling us the truth in the West about the horrific losses that Ukraine has taken. You've heard me say about 150, 157,000 dead on the battlefield. That includes 35,000 missing in action, presumed dead. And I've talked about a total of almost 400,000 casualties, people that are wounded. In most cases, not all, but in most cases, more than half of those will never return to duty because the wounds are too horrific. In other words, they're permanently lost to the Ukrainian fight. Now, supposedly when Zeluzhny was in town speaking to Secretary Austin and General Milley, several people have insisted that he actually told them that 257,000 Ukrainians have died. That includes soldiers, in other words, those in uniform, civilians, all types, all kinds, 257,000. Well, we don't know. I mean, that's, that's an unconfirmed rumor. But what it does tell you is that today in Ukraine, there are roughly between 18 and 22 million people left in the country under Zelensky's control. Now, Judge, that, that number is roughly the same as the number of people living in the Netherlands. You cannot sustain this war with that small population. Oh, can you hear me now? Gotcha. All right, that's Judge Napolitano on the channel. Let's do a little bit of prepping. This is Canadian Prepper. Got his uh, latest shovel too. $100 was shipping. But I'm going to tell you what, this is the coolest shovel I've ever seen. It's got the handle, it's got the case. I'm not going to take it all out and show it to you, but I always try to give you a little something besides doom and gloom, as he likes to put it. But uh, I, uh, I did do a search on this shovel because I thought, man, his prices are high because he's shipping it from Canada. You can't find this shovel anywhere. I think he's got an exclusive on this. And like he says in his videos, uh, he's only got 100 left in stock, so I... It is made in China, which I was kind of disappointed, but I tell you what, the quality, it's, um, it's awesome. You'd have to, I'll let you watch his videos on that. So let's get to Ukraine. First thing I want to start with is the dramatic footage of the, uh, of the ammo dump blowing up in Ukraine. That happened within the last 48 hours. Let's cut to that now. This is the explosion. Now, the Russians have shifted their tactics at this point. Uh, what they're trying to do is defang Ukraine, and they're hitting the ammo dumps. Now, whether they had intelligence that this is where the depleted uranium rounds uh, supplied by Great Britain. And by the way, I, I cannot believe that Great Britain, there's purely, these are purely evil people that gave these uh, depleted uranium rounds to Ukraine because we have ample evidence of what took place in Iraq with the use of these rounds. Uh, many children are being born deformed. You can uh, Google it. Be sure and Google it. That's what everybody tells you. Google it because everybody's too damn dumb to read a book. But 
Yeah, Google it, and uh, you can watch, read about the effects of depleted uranium rounds. And what the British were trying to do was they wanted to poison all of uh, eastern Ukraine so that the Russians in the Donbass region, uh, those extremely fertile lands that are the breadbasket of the world, would be poisoned for many years to come. Well, the Russians had other ideas, and they said, well... Uh, let's blow up the ammo dump where the rounds are, and I just want you to watch uh, this explosion because um, it, it was it was too huge for them to to stop uh, video from getting out, and you will not hear about anything about this in the mainstream media. But watch this. Holy shit! If you haven't seen this video, the Russians did an airstrike in Himilinitsky, Ukraine. I hope I got that somewhat correct. And this was the, uh, this, well, this is what, this is what happened. So that's a massive explosion. That is the, by far and away, I think the largest explosion I've seen of any, uh, you know, war video I've seen from the Ukraine fighting thus far. That is a massive, massive, massive explosion. And that's what happened. And everyone saw this and everyone thought, wow, what just happened here? I mean, that looks like a huge weapons depot that just exploded. And again, yes, that is a weapons warehouse that exploded, but it's not your typical weapons depot. Obviously not. Obviously, there's something a little more to this story than just some, uh, you know, Ukrainian high Mars systems being blown up. Obviously. OK. And obviously, this is not just a fuel depot. OK, we're going to get into how we know that in a second. But uh, before we get into this, I want to share this with you, because when the Russians hit this weapons warehouse, I'm sure they knew what they were hitting because they didn't want these weapons to end up on Russian territory. But they blew up a depleted uranium warehouse and the, these depleted uranium shells were supplied by the United Kingdom. And when they hit this warehouse of depleted uranium shells, not only did it cause a massive explosion, it literally caused the sky to turn into night. It, it caused daylight to become nighttime. OK, you don't know what I mean by that. Take a look at this second uh, clip, which shows a pretty crazy angle of the explosion from up close. It made it turn nighttime. Not a thing in our news about this. Yep. And there goes the uranium dust. You bought a skull, cannot. Would not want to be that Ukrainian. Watch that one more time. It, it was it was daylight out, as you can see at the end of this video here. People are saying, "Are those? Is that the same video, Jackson?" Yes, that's the same. So it's clearly daylight out, but the explosion literally turned it into nighttime. <laughs> That is what we call a nuclear explosion. That was like Destiny's brain when I debated him the first time. And the second time. So depleted uranium explosions cause every cancer under the sun, generational infertility, uh, you know, uh, you name it, right? I mean, you see an explosion like this, you know it is not good for human life. Here's another angle, okay? So, uh, again, the, every account was theorizing what this could have been. This was from the day in which it took place. Sorry, I wasn't around. So what's going on in Ukraine? Uh, Hilinitsky, Hil how do you say it again? Hilinitsky, 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 I think. Panic will set in in Ukraine as the Russian MOD will decide whether or not to increase precision strikes. 
But again, this was not just a precision strike on some random warehouse. Um, uh, the videos are just so crazy coming out of this. So the fact of the matter is that this explosion, we now are almost certain, was a result of explosions of depleted uranium. Now, how, do, how, well, how am I coming up? I'm not just coming up with this. I'm not just saying that's a big explosion. This was depleted uranium likely. First of all, here's a shot of the before and after of this. Uh, what is going to go down in history is one of the most um, probably costly points of this war in Ukraine. Here's the before and after shot of what it looks like. Uh, there's the before and um, or that's the before and this is the after. OK, so I mean, just dust, just dust left. I mean, you have all these like weapons, f storage facilities here, trees, and then it's just dust. Just dust after nothing left only depleted uranium dust is left okay and that's not all okay that's not all so right this is the first report i saw initial reports say the warehouse was filled to the brim with depleted uranium causing a burst of gamma radiation in the air radiation continues to rise even beyond 20 kilometers from the epicenter because you cannot control you cannot control uranium dust Crops of all kind, vegetables, fruits, and wheat will be affected in the next few days. So obviously what's going to happen is, I mean, this uranium is going to go up into the atmosphere, the dust, it's going to go up into the atmosphere, and it's going to fall at some point, okay? And this is going to be falling in Western Ukraine, okay? This is going to be falling where Ukraine does all of their wheat production, does all... Now, there's no sound here, but uh, my God, can you imagine being near an explosion like that? I bet the ground of all those buildings just shook beyond belief. They had to think it was there. They see that secondary explosion. That's the one that got me. Yeah, this is definitely it because we saw the footage from the dive. Um, showed the same thing. This is just a different angle. God. What, uh, what's happening to Ukraine is just beyond belief in the West doesn't care I like Trump's words let's end the dying now remember this is western Ukraine that just got poisoned with radioactive dust of course that was meant for eastern Ukraine hope the British know what they did all right so now that you've seen all of that let's look at another ammo dump that went up about just after the uh, oil tanks were hit let's cut to that now so this is from YouTube, uh, a couple more um, videos of ammo dumps. This, like I said, the Russians have shifted their tactics, and what they're targeting now is the um, military equipment and, of course, the ammo dumps. So this was two weeks ago. This wasn't the massive explosion. And then the, the next video will be the, um, the sun. So let's watch, watch this one. This was right after they hit the, uh, those oil tanks. Looks like another nuclear explosion, doesn't it? Imagine laying in your bed and it's white flash. I would think it, I'm under nuclear attack. Yeah, see, right after the oil facility was attacked. They want to say it was a consequence, but no, Russia's been targeting the ammo dumps for a while. Just wonder where they're getting their intelligence. And this is the sun. All right, 
right, so we can see now that uh, Russia has changed their tactics. They are hitting the ammo dumps all around Ukraine, and they're hitting a lot of the uh, Western equipment before it can be brought into this Ukrainian offensive that we've heard so much about. And I just wanted to kind of go through um, the last 48 hours in Ukraine. According to uh, multiple sources, uh, a lot of Russian information here, so believe what you want, but I'm just going to uh, give you everything that, that well, and uh, some of this is confirmed uh, in, in other ways, and I'll try to point out where uh, it's Russian propaganda, if you want, or Russian uh, information, and, uh, and, uh, and then also uh, uh, from other sources. So let's get into it. Wagner um, Pergoshi. He promises to return the body of a dead U.S. mercenary in a coffin. And if you watched any of the videos, the, the, the uh, U.S. politicians were going, hey, you better treat his body with respect. Yes, he says he's going to treat him with respect and return this uh, U.S. mercenary. I don't know how many others have died, uh, but it was just because Prigozhin made a video about this that we're hearing about it. The Kenzel uh, missile strike hitting the U.S. Patriot battery. Let's, uh, let's cut to the footage on that right now. This is the actual footage of the attack on Kiev by two or six Kenzel missiles. These are the Patriots going up. Millions and millions of U.S. taxpayer dollars, every one of those. Maxim. Patriot is still launching. It looks like that caught one missile. Now, the uh, commentary that I've been able to get from Colonel McGregor and other uh, sources is that what the Russians did was they launched a bunch of missiles, uh, not the Kinzels, uh, and they wanted to see where the uh, Patriot batteries are located. Um, I'm going to see if I can find some footage of the actual Patriot battery getting blown up. Uh, it's hard. It's been scrubbed uh, from the internet for the most part. I I, I should have <laughs> wish I'd recorded that video when I saw it. Uh, but anyway, I did find this one. This is on Russia Ukraine updates. I always want to give them credit. Um, so let's just keep going with the video. So this is the new Atlas on Rumble. Highly encourage you to watch his channel on uh, YouTube and Rumble. But uh, I think this video has been scrubbed from uh, YouTube because it shows the uh, the blogger footage of the Patriot battery. Uh, well, what looks like the Patriot battery being destroyed in Kiev. There was another attack on Kiev with Kinjal hypersonic missiles. I, I don't know the exact number, maybe two or three. And there is video of a Patriot battery launching upward to 30 missiles over the course of approximately two minutes before a huge fireball consumes the area where these missiles were being launched from. And uh, it looked like a Kinjal missile destroying a Patriot missile battery. And then later, the Russian Ministry of Defense claimed that a uh, Kinjal hypersonic weapon hit a U.S.-made Patriot air defense system in Kiev. This is from TASS, Russian state media. Then we had uh, Ukraine. This is via the BBC Ukraine war. Kiev says it shot down Russian hypersonic missiles. Uh, Ukraine is claiming that they shot all of these missiles down. They refuse to talk about. So getting into the Kinzel story, uh... If you're not familiar with it, you haven't been following the news. The uh, Pentagon and Ukraine claim that they shot down six hypersonic Kinzel missiles with the Patriot batteries. And uh, I've been looking for video to talk about 
this. And of course, the Russians said, well, we only shot two. <laughs> so how could you shoot down six? And uh, not only that, we have confirmation that our, our Kenzel missiles hit their targets. So anyway, that's uh, so this is uh, Ukraine says it shoots down more missiles than Russia fires. Shogu, Ukraine claims to intercept three times as many projectiles. By the way, this is the dive on Rumble. Uh, we're going to watch some of his video here in just a few, but I'm just going to read to you what it says here so I don't uh, steal too much of his material because he's just reading it also. Launches R R Russian Defense Minister has said, Russian Defense Minister Sher Shergi Shogu has refuted claims made by Ukrainian military officials about shooting down six Russian hypersonic Kinzel missiles during overnight strikes on targets near the country's capital city of Kiev. Ukraine routinely exaggerates the effectiveness of its anti-aircraft defenses, primarily intercepting incoming Russian munitions only with public statements. <laughs> what he said. All right, so Russia says, no, they can't shoot down our hypersonic missiles, which would uh, go along with everything that I know about them. Uh, uh, but the United States is saying that the Patriots... So we're gonna watch. Uh, we're gonna watch some video here in just a few, uh, which shows the Patriot battery, uh, supposedly, uh, with some um, Ukrainian bloggers that have been since thrown in jail because uh, they're saying that they were promoting propaganda against the Ukrainian military. But it's uh, wonderful footage of the uh, Ukrainians uh, launching 150 million dollars worth of Patriot missiles in two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> good things our tax dollars are going to a good cause over in Ukraine. And then in the end, uh, it shows uh, one of the hypersonic missiles coming in. And, it, well, it looks like a hypersonic missile coming in and blowing something up. Uh, it's hard to tell from the video, but, uh, of course, the blogger said that that was the Patriot battery. So let's, uh, I'll get into the video. We're going to watch a little bit of the dive here in just a few. Okay, getting back to the dive, uh, we're not going to play his video because I don't want to steal his material. But uh, and this, we we've known for quite some time that the uh, Russians are jamming the high Mars as they come in, and they've been able to shoot them down very effectively. Very few high Mars actually get through to their targets at this point. Well, of course, Britain has uh, supplied the, uh, the the new Storm Shadow which from what I understand have to be launched from planes. And uh, for, uh, well, the, the Russians claim that they've shot down some of the planes that are launching these missiles. They think they have about 150 kilometer or mile range. I'm not sure if it's kilometers or miles, uh, but let's just read what this says here real quick. Uh, Several Storm Shadow cruise missiles, which were recently supplied to Ukraine by Britain, have been shot down by Russian air defenses over the past 24 hours. And by the way, that's what this whole video is about the last 24 hours. I just want to show you what's going on in Ukraine. Seven Storm Shadow long-range cruise missiles, three Harum anti-radar missiles, and seven HIMARS multiple rocket shells were intercepted. So uh, according to the Russians, they're very effective at shooting everything down that's coming in. Okay, we're going to capture so now some of the dives video. Um, because also uh, 22 drones were shot down, uh, Ukrainian drones, according to the Russians. Now, I'm going to let him explain why I tend to believe the Russians over what the Ukrainians. And uh, we're going to get into uh, uh, video footage that the Ukrainians provided to, to support their fact that they shot down one Kenzel. Uh, it was a while back, uh, not the six that they claim in the last 24 hours that hit, that, that hit, well, there's only two that hit Kiev, according to the Russians. So let's just watch uh, this little piece of video. This, they actually have proof. They have photos, they have videos, they have, uh, you know, you can look it's at about the Russians. The missiles and see the serial numbers, so on and so forth. As for Ukraine, they attempt to uh, mirror this tactic of providing evidence, what we call evidence for their claims, but they fail miserably. Here is the Ukrainian effort to convince us all that they shot down a Kinzel. However, even a small child can identify the fact that these two rockets have nothing to do with each other. So here is Klitschko. I believe this is Klitschko holding the uh, alleged Kinzel that they shot down in Ukraine. Um, here's, you know, the propaganda, makeshift propaganda uh, studio for the Ukrainian military. So here's the Kinzel missile that they shot down, and here's a real Russian Kinzel. 
I'll take my camera off so you can see the two comparison. I mean, these are nothing alike. These, in size, in shape, coloration, these things are nothing alike, okay? And there's so many people coping about this. They're like, oh, well, the, it's just, that's just the tip of the warhead. That's just the, well, no, the tip, you, we see the tip of the warhead. It looks nothing alike. It's not the same, it's not the same missile. And the Kinzels are much, 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 much larger, much larger. Okay, here's another side-by-side uh, -side for you all to look at. Here's uh, Klitschko holding it. We've gotten the Kinzel, and here's the real Kinzel. Much larger, much different in shape and size, so on and so forth. Uh, the Kinzel... So you saw the same footage I did. <laughs> those, two, those two examples were nothing alike, and that's what the Pentagon is pushing out as a shot down Kenzel missile. But uh, you, you believe what you want. I, I'm just looking at it going, hmm, doesn't look that way to me. And so what are the Kenzels being used for? Well, let's watch a little more of the dive. And the fact of the matter is that Russia is using their Kinzels to actually take out the Patriot battery defense systems, okay? Russia will continue strikes on Ukraine to identify and destroy the Patriot air defense system. Now this is the number one target, billed with reference to the ex-top official of the Bundeswehr, okay? And we just saw, literally, like last, uh, last stream, that this was the case. Where is it here? This was this was a video we covered on the last stream. This is a Patriot battery missile defense system trying to prevent an attack on their Patriot battery by shooting uh, what is believed to be at least 30 Patriot battery missiles, anti-defense missiles into the air within a span of two minutes. Now, each one of those missiles reigns in at five million dollars, meaning that they shot off. $158 million, roughly, over the span of two minutes to try and prevent a Russian airstrike on their Patriot battery missile defense systems. And as you can see at the end of the video, uh, yes, it was eventually blown up by some sort of a Russian missile. We don't know if it was a Kinzel or otherwise, but we do know it was blown up. Now okay, so that's all that I got on the, uh, the Patriot battery. I hope that... Uh you saw what I saw. It's it's hard to tell that whether the Kinzel missile actually destroyed the Patriot battery, but uh, there are five Ukrainian um, bloggers that have been put in jail uh, for putting up a video about what actually happened. So make of that what you will. Uh, Ukraine doesn't like it when uh, they can't control the news. So let's just put it that way. So here's a day in the fighting in Ukraine. Last 48 hours. In Kherson, an artillery gun was destroyed and 25 Ukrainian soldiers were killed. The rapid Ken bombs uh, kill hiding Ukrainian infantry in the woods. Uh, the 100 millimeter anti-tank cannon is also good. Uh, the Rapida, or Rap Rapira, Rapira, at killing infantry. They also hit Ukrainian heavy armored vehicles, unknown how many. Russia used the Nona, N-O-N-A-S-V-K, mortars. It's a 120 millimeter self-propelled mortar cruise. They fired high explosives and rocket assisted, well, it fires a high explosive and rocket assisted uh, projectiles at a range of up to 18 kilometers. And uh, according to reports, over 500 Ukrainian troops were wiped out in the last 48 hours uh, not necessarily by that alone, but that and other weapon systems. The Russian army, army launched 75 artillery attacks in 102 areas along the extended front line of the, uh, of the war. Russian air defense wrecked uh, 22 Ukrainian drones, and that is confirmed by multiple sources. Uh, so, yeah, 22 Ukrainian drones were fought, shot down within the last 48 hours. In Donetsk. Let's see, 215 Ukrainian soldiers were killed and five armored combat vehicles, seven motor vehicles, and MSTA-B and D-30 howitzers were destroyed. This is in the last 48 hours, okay? Russian forces also repelled 10 Ukrainian army attacks, reportedly killing over 70 Ukrainian troops near the Krasnok. K-R-A-S-N-O-Y-E, along the Donetsk front line. 
Russian aircraft downed uh, Ukrainian uh, Su-24 and Su-25 warplanes in Donetsk. Probably up trying to shoot the uh, the British, um, what do they call them, shadow shadow missile or whatever that is. Uh, let's cut to the cut to the footage on that now. Uh, this is a 20 second video. This is um, looks like some of the British storm shadow rockets uh, got through uh, in in Ukraine. Let's watch this. 20 seconds. All right, so that's the that's the shadow uh, footage that I have on that. In southern Donetsk, 135 Ukrainian troops were uh, eliminated by Russian forces. In Kupnatsk, K U P Y A N S K, Kupnatsk. Gosh, I, I I'm not good at Russian. 60 Ukrainian troops were eliminated. Uh, Russian forces also neutralized uh, five Ukrainian subversive groups. Uh, I guess they were trying to uh, perpetrate some um, uh, terrorist actions behind or terrorist in the Russian view or, or covert ops behind uh, uh, Russian lines, uh, but they were uh, neutralized. I'm not sure what neutralized mean. I, I assume, well, neutralized. You make that what you will. <laughs> Does that mean killed or captured? Who knows? In Kherson, an artillery gun was destroyed and 25 Ukrainian soldiers were killed. Uh, this is uh, interesting. According to Seymour Hirsch, uh, he put out another uh, um, Substack article, uh, and he says that uh, a number of European nations are quietly, led by Poland no less, uh, pushing Ukraine to end the war. A group comprising the Baltic nations and some Eastern European nations are putting the onus on Ukrainian President Zelensky to find a way to end the war, even by resigning if necessary. According to American intelligence, an oxymoron in my opinion, uh, the uh, investigation or the instigation is coming from Poland, Lithuania, Estonia, Czechoslovakia, and Lativa. Uh, what's interesting, I, I heard another report that Germany might be in on that also. But you will notice that Norway, Italy, and Finland, by the way, Italy, what a disappointment, man. I, who would have thought that uh, the uh, the new president there, what's her name? Um, gosh, dang, I liked her when, when she was running for office, that she's a huge war, neocon warmonger. Uh, but they are notably absent from this, uh, this effort. And then what Poland said is the reason that they feel like they can go uh, sue for peace is they feel that... Uh, Russia is a toothless tiger and not worth fighting. That's the words that came out of there. Getting to the sanctions, I thought this was very interesting, and this is confirmed by multiple sources. India refining Russian oil is, well, India, well, we know that India is refining Russian oil, but what's funny is they're selling it back to the European countries since the United States blew up the uh, Nord Stream pipeline. So Russia could have been getting the uh, Russian oil, I mean, Europe could have been getting the Russian oil for really dirt cheap through that pipeline and instead they're paying about twice as much by buying it from india <laughs> it's just for finding the russian oil pay by it so they're paying twice as much there and then uh uh what is the the british uh what they call her uh i can't remember her name it was the two two leaders from brussels uh, said that india has to quit selling uh, their oil to uh europe uh, in refining, well, Russian oil, but what other oil is India going to sell to Europe? I guess it, now that the Nord Stream pipeline's gone, where's Europe going to get its oil from? I don't know. You tell me. Yeah, and this this was interesting. Uh, that um, that uh, Patriot missile, you know, strike that took out supposedly the Patriot battery. Uh, Russian news, they came out and they, and they were uh, boasting that what they did was they used a combination of missiles to sniff out the U.S. Patriot battery near Kiev and then use a Kyr Kyrsaw missile to destroy it, which makes sense. If you look, there was uh, two minutes of uh, 30, 
30 missiles, was it 30, that went up from the Patriot battery? I don't know. We, we got the footage on that. Um, the other reason that uh, Poland wants to, to uh, end the war is the refugees are causing a lot of problems throughout Europe. I don't know how many are in Poland, but it's a huge number. Um, I mean, not the 20 million that we have here in the United States <laughs> from all over the world, from China, Russia, oh, the drug cartels, uh, you know, we got it all here in the United States. But, uh, but anyway, there's a lot of Ukrainian refugees, as you heard from Douglas McGregor at the beginning of the video, um, that are in there. Uh, yeah, it's, well, there's yeah, 30 Patriot missiles fired in two minutes. Uh, that was 150 million dollars <laughs> that we spent <laughs> in two minutes. Uh, so um, the last uh, bit of news is uh, Ukraine is suffering. Uh, and you can watch, uh, there's all kinds of videos on YouTube about uh, Bakhmut. Um, I think they're down to the last uh, block or two blocks, uh, maybe even a, just a couple of buildings. And how in the world they were saying they're going to hold out till Sunday. I don't see that, but that's what people are saying. Uh, but it looks like uh, Sunday, Russia will be uh, finishing off Bakhmut, and then uh, I'm sure there'll be videos everywhere. Bakhmut has fallen. Of course, I told you that uh, about a month ago uh, when they took over the central part of the city. Because uh, in my opinion, it had fallen at that point. But uh, there was still a lot of fighting uh, left to go on. So we'll. Oh yeah. And so that whether whether it will last till Sunday. Uh, just a side note. Uh, you know, we've got the crisis at the uh, southern border that continues because the, uh, you know, it's funny because the Democrats, uh, you know, what they're trying to do is change the demographics and they're going to give all these illegal aliens the ability to or, or uh, allow them to vote in the U.S. elections. And so they're hoping that that's going to uh, keep the Democrat Party in power. But what's happening is they're alienating <laughs> <laughs> all the rest of their constituency, because if you watch Chicago, all the blacks up there are pissed off because the uh, illegal aliens are taking over all the money that, uh, that the Democrats used to give them in Chicago, because, uh, well, Chicago went 97% Democrat or something like that. And when I say blacks, I mean, I'm talking about all of the uh, uh, people in, in Chicago that, uh, that live at the foot of the U.S. government and the Democrat Party. Uh, the 97 percent that voted Democrat, so they're they're getting kind of pissed off. I don't know. They'll, I'm sure they'll probably still vote Democrat, but still, it, I, I, maybe this uh, illegal alien thing might backfire on the Democrats. Uh, but you know, when you get when you got 20 million potential new votes, because uh, they're definitely trying to turn Texas uh, blue with all of those new votes in Texas. Uh, I'm not sure how many more uh, Texas can ship out, but. Anyway, the, the, the piece of news I wanted to get to was here in Florida, we just sent uh, 1,100 uh, National Guard troops along with uh, other equipment and supplies to help Texas uh, secure its border. And uh, from what I understand, some other uh, red states are doing the same thing. So we're kind of seeing the country dividing here. Uh, you got the blue states, uh, which are doing everything in their power to keep all the illegal aliens in the red states. So they, when they grant the illegal aliens amnesty, that uh, they'll have all those votes in the red states. And then, of course, you got the red states that are combining together to try to keep the illegal aliens out. So it's, a, it's an interesting dynamic. Um, we'll see where it all goes. And, you know, the other thing I think about is a lot of these illegal aliens, they really are fleeing, you know, socialism or communism. And so I wonder how they're actually going to vote, you know, because when they really think about it, you know, the Democrats are a Marxist, socialist, communist party, really quite evil in my, in my opinion. Uh, they're definitely warmongers. Uh, they, they are eco-terrorists uh, blowing up the uh, Nord Stream pipeline, probably one of the most ecological disasters. All four poisoning Ukraine, uh, as you saw with the, uh, um, with the uh, depleted uranium rounds, uh, they were going to... Uh, allow the uh, the fertile uh, eastern Ukraine uh, wheat fields and all of the, that uh, farmland to be poisoned uh, with radioactive material. Uh, the Democrats want this. I don't know why the Democrats are so evil. Why would you want to poison all of that fertile land? I don't know. I, why would you want open borders? I mean, that's what the Democrats want. Why would you want high taxes? That's what the Democrats want. I tell you, the Democrat Party doesn't make any sense. Why would you want abortion up until the day that the little little guy pops out of the womb? You know, anyway. 
Well, that's it for this video. Uh, sorry it got a little long in the tooth with all of the clips, uh, but I wanted you to see the footage of those explosions and, uh, and of course, the uh, attack on the Patriot battery. So peace out. Stay free. It's good, 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 good to live in the free, free, free Republican state of Florida under the great leadership of Governor the Sanctimonious. Say hi, boo. Say hi. Say hi to boo. Last day I got him. The ex-wife's coming to pick him up tomorrow. Let's watch a bunch of U.S. military hardware that's about to be destroyed in Ukraine. I'm not sure if that's copyrighted, so i got to mute that. We're going to get into a bunch of numbers. I cannot believe how much of our hardware we're sending to Ukraine. What the hell are we going to have left? I mean, I guess they figure that Mexico and Canada are not going to invade the United States, but we've got an open border. We've got 20 million people that have come across the border. How many of those are paramilitary groups? You know, we've got the drug cartels. I, I do think we're going to need some of this military hardware at some point here in the United States, but that's just me.